some people on the team are better at collections. Some are better at leasing and some are better, you know, overseeing the CapEx and others. Do you have the right butts in the right seats to be as efficient as possible? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real Estate. I'm your co-host, Dan Breezy. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, I want to talk a little bit about leadership. It's something that as an asset manager in our company, in our business, and this can honestly translate to anybody, parents, whether you're a manager, um, brother, sister, doesn't really matter. Any of the topics we're going to talk about today will transfer into your real life um, scenarios. But I'm going to talk today specifically about asset management and how to apply some leadership skills that we found have been effective recently and their skills or tools you could use for any situation in your life. You know, we flew in the other day, I was last week to a property that's challenged. It's our most challenged asset. It's not performing well. It has been difficult to manage. It's in a location we wouldn't buy again. It's a class of property we wouldn't buy again. Um, but back when we bought it in mid 2021, the economy was good and they had a great management company in there and it was running decently well. And based off of what was going on in the sub market at that time, there was room for improvement or so we thought. And really the deal has struggled since day one for us. And when I look at our deals across our portfolio, you know, it's these problem child deals that really have been the most educational for us. And I think these are the types of deals. And when you go through a downturn, like we all clearly now know we're in, we are in a real estate recession. And if anything, it's bottomed and it's on its way, you know, kind of reset cycle on its way back up. So, you know, these are the types of deals that Mike and I have learned the most from. And I just want to bring some leadership with asset management um, realizations to you guys to help you learn, to help you be better asset managers, to help you be better limited partner investors. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys perform better with the deals you have. So the first thing that really had stood out to us on our visit last week is, you know, the clarity of outcome. What, what outcome are we looking to create exactly? And in my mind and in our asset manager's mind and in Mike's mind, it's, it's really a clear pro forma projection and we're basing it based that, that projection based on the numbers. And when the property is not hitting those numbers, we're not hitting the outcome that we're looking to create on this deal. It seems very simple. But one thing in the asset management role position is to repeatedly share that outcome and repeatedly course correct on a week by week basis with your on-site team. And, you know, we have been doing that. There has been weekly calls and clearly people know that we're off on vacancy, but really delinquency. And another piece that you know, is popping up with these deals that are struggling because delinquency right now, it's a big challenge. And you listen to operators that have been around for 20, 30 years, they're saying delinquency is the most challenging it's been in their careers. So this is not, and this is not a one off deal. Now, some of these deals struggle from delinquency more so than others based on the demographic that's leasing. Um, but it's, it's not a one off thing. It's just delinquency is rising right now. And it's rising for a plethora of reasons. You know, jobs are being lost. Um, wages are not growing. Inflation has affected everyone. We all know everything's more expensive. It doesn't matter what you, everyone can undeniably see that inflation has really taken a toll on your expenses each month. I mean, I look at my credit card bill every month and there's a number that I just can't get it below. And it seems like a massive number. And when I'm looking at what my wife and three kids and I are doing, we're not doing that much. You know, we're not, we're not spending in exorbitant ways here. So if it's that way for us, I'm certain it's that way for our residents. And so when 
you see these squeeze happening, delinquency starts to rise on deals. And it's not all deals, but it's some deals, some locations, some demographics. So one thing that I think is the most eye-opening for us as a syndication group that's looking for specific deals is really honing in deeply on location and demographic types that you want to be working with in the future and ones that you don't want to be working with in the future. And that's on each syndicator to adjust their buying criteria. You know, what's your buy box and your buy box is going to change, you know, is going to change year by year. I know our buy box has changed year by year and I'm certain that in the next five years, our buy box will continue to change. And it's changing based off of what I'm calling principles of real estate investing. And we're learning some very, very clear principles in this pullback. And, you know, everybody who's managing deals, you're getting some of the best lessons you're going to get, I think, in your real estate investing career. And it's for those companies, those syndicators that are resilient, persistent, nimble, change quickly. Um, that will come out the other side and be much better operators and much wiser investors due to this pullback. Um, you know, so so going back to your outcome, does the team see the vision? And when I say, does the team see the vision, they might be nodding their head when you're talking. But when you ask them to say, hey, what do you hear in my vision? What When we were talking for the last 10 minutes, when I'm sharing with you what we're looking to create, what do you hear? And most of the time, what they say back to me isn't exactly or even close sometimes to what was said. So numbers will help that definitely. Like, hey, we're looking for X amount of net rental income each month. That's success. But there are other things or other variables on these assets that you really want your team to fully see and you guys want to be on the same page. So one way of getting that clear is to have them repeat back to you exactly what you said so you're either clear or not clear to, to wash any discrepancies away the next thing that was really apparent to us is do we have the right team members in the right places again it seems pretty obvious like is your leasing agent outgoing friendly warm do they know the asset thoroughly how do they do when in the office you know that's one thing that's really easy is is as you're sitting in the office doing some work how does that you know, leasing agent sound? Are they efficient? Are they warm? Are they inviting? And how do they do when you're not there? Obviously, when you're there, they might be able to put on a show for you. But when you secretly shop your properties, which we do on a month by month basis and deals that are struggling, we'll do that even on a week by week basis. But how do they sound? And do you have the right leasing agent in the right seat, you know, representing your property in a way that you want to be represented? dig in on that. That's your job as the asset manager. Yeah, you hire a third party professional management company. And these third party professional management companies, they mean well, they're out to do as good as they can do. But what I've seen is it seems like, you know, you're one of 20, 30, 40, 70, 100 deals. And your heart pours into this asset because it's one of your five or 10, maybe 20 deals. Um, and you have more to lose than any of these management companies. So as a third party management company that you hire, it really is 100% on you to verify that the right butts are in the right seats. And if you can real realize and verify why they're not, bring that data, bring those facts or what you found real time to get the right people in the right seat. And what we found as well is that some people on the team are better at collections some are better at leasing and some are better, you know, overseeing the CapEx and others. Do you have the right butts in the right seats to be as efficient as possible? And, you know, when we were there on our property, it was really important and is really important to go and look to discover what's going on with each of these team members privately. You know, like, hey, we're going to go talk for 30 minutes. What do you think the problem is? What do you see happening here? Help me understand what I'm not seeing. Help me see what you're seeing. And just getting their perspective and sitting with all of the different individual team members, and you start to get a story that seems somewhat or is consistent amongst many team members. You might have three folks in and four folks out or three in and three out. What is each team member saying? The problem is, and is there anything that's coming up over and over again? Is there anything you can spot that you think is the problem? 
And as you start to discover, and you're coming purely from a from a place of curiosity, you know, if, if you come in what one thing that can be challenging is that you care so much about these deals, you want them to perform so badly, because everything's on you, all eyes are on you as a syndicator, you get angry, right, you get mad. And when that anger and motivate or anger and frustration seeps in, you often get your team members to shut down and they won't share with you what you maybe need them to share with you. So one thing I think is being a great leader is, is really going in and just being curious to get the data and make that environment in that conversation very safe, very safe so they can say what needs to be said and you can get the information that you need to have. Because without that data, without that information, you're at far more risk. It's far riskier to not know what's going on than for team members to open up and tell you this is what they see is going on. And I hope it can that can be seen. And again, it seems very obvious, but sometimes you feel like you want to stick your head in the sand, or we do. Hey, let's just let's just let's just not look look at the exact problem. But you got to get to that problem as soon as possible. You got to know that problem as soon as possible. And sometimes we think we know the problem, then you get on site and you realize it's not the problem. So that on site visit, sitting down with each team member, making them feel safe, making them feel heard and allowing them to really open up with you. It's a bit of a skill. I think that can be worked on and worked on for months and years to come and the safer and, and, and more open you can make that environment, the more likely you're, you're going to get that data so you can make the effective changes. The other thing that just I can't hit hard enough, ladies and gentlemen, is that when you see something happening on an asset and something is starting to trend in a direction you don't like, or it, your occupancy is maybe dipping or your delinquency is starting to rise, hit that problem as soon as possible. If you have any inclinations about what you're seeing going on, get with that on-site team, investigate and make immediate changes because those problems will only get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once a problem gets too big and you burn through cash, now you may be in a situation where you can't get out of that scenario. You can't dig out of that hole. Whereas if you see, you know, you got KPIs and if you guys are asset managers, you're going to have a list of KPIs and, you know, key performance indicators. And some of those key performance indicators are going to be, you know, units that are vacant, units that are ready, units that are vacant, and not ready, um, work orders, delinquency, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, um, tours, amount of tours, amount of tours that were turned into leases, those kinds of KPIs, your 30 day occupancy, 60 day current occupancy. All that information are dials on your dashboard for you to tune into and make changes quickly. The longer you wait for problems to grow and the more you put your head in the sand, the more likely you are to have major, major problems develop. So this was just a short little hit on asset management and leadership. I hope this helps you guys. If there's one thing I can say, get out there and get on site with your team members and you know like be respectful of your property management company you hired this third party management company or if you own the management company or in a different boat but if you hired a third party management company and the property is not performing well sit down with that owner sit down with that regional of the management company and let them know that hey this is my asset our asset we own it as the investors and based on the data we have right now we feel like there's concerns and I'd like to go take X amount of time to go meet with individuals and let them know what you're going to do. Make sure that they know, hey, we're on the same team here. We're looking to have performance just as bad as you want it. We want it as well. And so if you guys can create that up front and don't go do it behind their back, because that will potentially upset them and you'll lose trust if you're going to just go do this behind their back and then all of a sudden the on-site team is calling the regional saying hey one of the owners is here i just had a two-hour interview they grilled me and again that's not your goal you're not goal is not to go on there and grill your on-site team it's to create comfortable synergy safe environment to get the data to make the changes as a team think of it like we're all here working at this business the more efficient we are, the more synergy we have, the better chance we all have of succeeding and doing well for the owners, your residents, and the investors. Good luck.
Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Keeping It Real Estate. Again, my name is Dan Breezy. If you want to learn more about what we do, go to www.granitetowersequitygroup.com forward slash contact us, and you can start to see future opportunities that we bring out. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.